I'm just holding hands and all that crap. Okay, right, so going. Okay, haploid. Ready, steady, go. Taylor, go. No, no, uh-uh. Pull the mask up and say it properly. Mask up. Up. Go. Oh. Deployed. Keep it sweet. Today is definitely the F word day. Okay. So it's a cell with two sets of chromosomes. Okay. And in a human, the diploid number is. Billy? No, yes. Back row. In a. What did I say? In a human. In a human. No, I'm not giving you the answer now. I'm writing something else. Go. In a human. Diploid number is. Good. All right. In a human, haploid number is N, um, is obviously 23. Okay. And an example, Kerry, of a human cell that has 23 chromosomes is A. Um, uh, no, don't tell her. Don't tell her. Don't tell her. Six. 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 Okay. So, no, guys, because I asked for an example, I am asking for a specific example. So, you've got to say sperm or ovum. Yeah. You can't just say gamete. Good. Thank you. Glad to see that's on your mind. Okay. All right, so an example of a, of a cell that is haploid is a sperm cell. In a human, that sperm cell has 23 chromosomes. In a normal human, um, all right, an example of a diploid cell would be Taylor. Um, Taylor, you need to sort this mask out. Sorry, no, just keep something down. Um, you can tie it at the Sort end. it out. Make the ear things shorter. Okay, going. Nat. Skin cell. Yay, skin cell. Actually, not an ideal because many of the skin cells are dead and have lost their nucleus. So what the two things that you can't say is a skin cell and a red blood cell. So you can say a liver cell, okay, etc. All right. Definition of a gamete. Terry. <laughs> Can I take a photo of this? <laughs> the only time Kerry this year has answered a question. Go. Good. Okay. And a sex cell is obviously always haploid, and an example of a gamete in a human would be a sperm cell or an egg cell. I think the reason why you can't answer anything is because you're going through that file. Sorry for that. All right. What is a somatic cell, Kerry? No. <laughs> Well done. Let's try the third. I don't know. We've just said it, babe. I know, I know. Got that on camera now. No, I answered two questions. And so that's your job for the year? Yes. Right, for the day, for the day. Okay, all right. So a somatic cell is opposite to a gamete. So it is not a, it's any body cell that is not a gamete. Okay. So give me an example of a somatic cell, Kiri. Um, no, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I'm sorry, I'm just. It's not spread. Love? I know any it's cell in the body that is not a gamete. Um, Liver. Blood cell. Liver cell, red blood cell, white blood cell, etc. Can you give the answer red blood cell or skin cell, Matt? No. In, res in, the, uh, in response to this one. Somatic. Um, I don't think so. No, you can. It was just concerning its chromosome number because these cells are, they don't have a nucleus. 
the skin cell and the red blood cell. So you can't give them as an answer for a chromosome number, but you can give them as an answer for a somatic cell. Okay, right, do you all understand that? And I'm moving to that side. I'm going to pick on that side, then I'm going back to Kerry. All right, autosome. Now, just because you're not making eye contact with me doesn't mean I don't know that you're there. Julia, go. I've been sending you messages. Oh, it doesn't determine gender. So what is it? A cell is not involved in... No, 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 no. Every single cell is involved in determining gender. Because every cell has got six, six chromosomes in it. Michelle, what's with the frown? Huh? I can see your eyes going. Yeah. Michelle, what was going on in your brain there? No, I was just thinking about how skin cells determine sex. So, if you go like this up, don't social distancing and all up Joshua's cheek. Is there stuff there that you're hoping like hell you don't have on your skin cells on your cheek? What is that stuff? It's a beard. There we go. And so, do you understand that there's more than just the, that determines gender? Okay. All right. Everybody happy? All right. So now, guys, listen carefully to me. Here we're talking so so, and therefore these two terms are to do with chromosomes. So in the human context, which chromosomes are autosomes and which chromosomes are gonosomes? If it helps you to do this one first and then that one, then I'm fine with that. That's fine. Good. So the gonosomes are the six chromosomes. So X and Y. Right. Joshua's gonosomes. At X, Y. Good. Kerry, your gonosomes. X, X. Good. What then are autosomes? And going back to Julia sort of described them. Go my bad. Jules? Um, they don't determine gender. So they are those chromosomes which are not sex chromosomes. Okay. So a human body cell, queasy, how many autosomes? Ruth, sort her out. So I'm going to say it again. In a human body cell, in other words, in a somatic cell, how many, what did I say? Autosomes. How many autosomes? Quasi? Rethink it. Okay, so let's go back. Human body cell, somatic cell, 46 chromosomes. Oh, 46. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You know figures. I don't do figures. Okay. 46 chromosomes. How many of those are autosomes? Good. You okay with that? Because two of them are gonosomes. So two of them are either XX or XY in a normal human. Okay. So if I say to you in a human body cell, how many gonosomes? Kibetsu? <coughs> Like two. Just two. Just two. You're okay with that. All right. Sperm cell. Kerry. How many autosomes? Don't tell her. 22. Yes. How many gonosomes? Uh, this is very high. 
bread. <laughs> Ma'am, why me? Because you're the sex cell queen. Zero. <laughs> Zero. That's cause for concern. Okay, are you just going to keep, if you tell her once more, I'm throwing you out. Well, stop it. Um, okay. Are you just going to keep going numbers? I said one. Said and one. then if I keep looking at you, you're going to say? Uh, it's one, one. It's one. You happy with that? Is it an X or is it a Y? Uh, X. Y. It's an X. Wait, the one is an X, isn't it? How would you like me to look at you, little puppet pie? If it's wrong, you can tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it's wrong. Is it not an X? It's a spoon. It's a... Yeah, it's a Jade, egg. don't give her hints. Wait, what did you ask? <laughs> okay, so you said there's one gonosome in a sperm cell. Yes. I said to you, is it an X or is it a Y? Yeah, I said X. I know, and I said no. And then it's Y. And I said no. Wow. Then it's a, I don't know. Wait, but you asked if it's X or Y. I did. Oh, it's X, Y. <laughs> you said there's but, one. How can it be X, Y? I don't and how are they both wrong? Bongo. We don't know. Because the oh. Could have X or it could have Y. I think my first one was I don't know. Okay, so guys, focus and listen to me. This is important. Because when a male produces sperm cells, he's got 44 autosomes and X, Y as the gonosomes. And so when he produces sperm cells, all of those sperm cells have got 22 autosomes in a normal situation. And X or 22 autosomes and Y. So half of a male's sperm cells contain an X chromosome. And half of a male's sperm cells contain a Y chromosome. Ma'am, at the top there by the X, is that a 4? No, like the other side. No, it's a Y. It looks like a 4. It's a Y. It doesn't look like a 4. I thought it was a 4. There we go. How is that a 4? It could be a 4. There's a 4. Looks nothing like that. But a Y is No, guys, that's a 1. I thought it was 24 times. Okay. I don't care. Just listen while I'm talking to you. Okay, right. Everybody happy with this? Yes. Who determines the gender of a child? Jade. Now, I'm not asking you any more questions. Kerry. The, the male? The male. Okay. Because if this sperm cell fuses with an egg cell, what gender is that child? If this sperm cell fuses with an egg cell, what gender is that child? Man. What is the gonosome in an egg cell? X. It can only be X. You happy with that? So all egg cells are 22 and X. So it could be those two in which case the child is a girl, or it could be those two, in which case the child is a boy. All right, you happy with that? Yes. Wait, so ma'am, did you say a sperm cell could be 22X or 22Y? Half sperm cells are like this, yeah. and half sperm cells are like that. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. All right, everyone happy with autosome and gonosome? Yes. Homologous. Okay, Jade. Um, must I give you like the five characteristics of the egg? No. So I remember what the other one was. 
But you can't actually... Okay, now I've remembered it. You can't actually see it if you're looking at a photograph of the chromosomes. And it's the fact that, it, that they will pair up in late prophase one of meiosis. Homologous chromosomes are the only ones that will pair up. So you'll get a chromosome one and one, not one and two. Okay, but that's not your critical if you're looking at it, how you're going to see. Although you can't see all of them if you're looking at that. Michelle, have you got a jacket here? No, okay. Okay, all right. So, Jadla, go. Wrong, but no, but it's fine. Okay. It's the only way I know whether you've got misconceptions or not. Okay. Is it a pair of chromosomes that are genetically identical to one another? Okay. So they're not identical to each other because they may have, um, for one characteristic, the, the um, genes for that characteristic may be different. So this one might say blue eyes and that one might say brown eyes. So they're not identical to each other. But they are chromosomes that are the same length, have the centromere in the same position, have genes for the same characteristics. They will pair up in meiosis one, and they come from, um, one of each pair comes from either parent. Is that good English? So one will be paternally derived and the other one will be maternally derived. So the egg cell will have 23 chromosomes, one of one, one of two, one of three, one of four, one of five. The sperm cell will have 23 chromosomes in a human, one of one, one of two, one of three, one of four, one of five, etc. And this one from the mother and this one from the father are homologous. Because they're the same length, they've got centromeres at the same position, and they've got genes for the same characteristics on them at the same positions. Those genes may be the same, in which case you just call them genes, or they may be different, in which case you call them alleles. So the gene for brown eyes and the gene for blue eyes are alleles. But the gene for brown eyes and the gene for tongue shape, no, thumb shape, are not alleles. Because they're not for the same characteristic. They're not even related to each other. You don't talk about them. I'm worried about those eyes. Josh? Oh, no, yeah, too. So in an exam, they said define homologous. Would you say all of them? I would do more the same length centromere at the same position pair up. Yes, I would. And remember then the other thing that I haven't mentioned today, if they are stained for banding pattern, they will have the same banding pattern. Same, in other words, the same regions of light and dark. Okay. And you learned that when you dealt with meiosis. Or I taught it to you. Let's be honest here. <coughs> okay. All right, let's go to dominant and recessive. Okay. All right, so let's go. Mm, so, Hannah, dominant. Okay, I think really that the only way you can explain the word dominant is if you consider an organism that is heterozygous for a characteristic. So, a dominant allele is one that is shown in the phenotype of an organism that is heterozygous for a characteristic. A dominant allele is one that is shown in the phenotype or an organism that is heterozygous for a characteristic. In other words, 
if you have the symbols big R, little r for an individual. With big R meaning able to roll the tongue and little r being unable to roll the tongue. Okay, so this individual is heterozygous for that characteristic. Maybe homozygous for others, but you're not interested in the other ones. You're only interested in this one. So this individual is heterozygous for tongue rolling ability. Right? You happy with that? And therefore, if you are, able, if you are asked to describe dominant and recessive, you would say that in an individual heterozygous for a characteristic, the dominant one is the one that is shown in the phenotype. In other words, they express that gene. And the recessive one is the one that isn't expressed. Okay, put your mask over your nose. Yes, Joshua, go. Um, I'm for dominant gene, not say it's a copy of the gene that's always expressed. If it's present. So in other words, that one, the dominant wouldn't be expressed because it's not there. Yeah. Okay. So you would have to put it in, in the context of a heterozygous organism. All right. Everybody happy with that? And therefore, if you are defining recessive, you again would need to put it in this context and you would say it is the gene that is not expressed in a recessive organism would only be expressed in one that is homozygous recessive. So this individual would be unable to roll their tongue. Um, so you said the gene that is not expressed in a recessive organism. Then I was drunk. <laughs> um, it's all these alcohol views. In a heterozygous <laughs> organism, sorry. Thank you, Joshua. I do appreciate the fact that you're the child that tells me when I blubs. Oh, you're welcome, <laughs> uh, Otherwise, I'll carry on for the rest of my life just like doing that and everyone's frowning. And, uh, Jade, you wanted to ask a question first. Yes, now I just wanted to know, when you were describing like a dominant, dominant and recessive, do you refer to it as a dominant allele, recessive allele, or dominant gene, recessive gene? Allele is more correct. You're, cor you're, you're right. Okay. Charlize? Oh, that was my same question. Oh, okay. Perfect. Sorry. Thank you for correcting me on that one as well, guys. Okay, right, so we happy with haploid, diploid, gamete, somatic. Kerry, what's a gamete? Sexual. Good. Okay, example of a gamete in a human? A sperm. Or an egg cell. Stop fixating on that. Okay, all right. <laughs> Heterozygous and homozygous. What is the alternative word? <laughs> <laughs> It's like lunchtime, Matt. I oh, know, um, that's something that came up with the phone. What did I miss? Okay, don't focus on what you've missed. Just keep up with what you're doing and then you can go back on the video and put it on. So guys, um, I just need to point out something to you about the video is that I don't have control over this video at the end of this lesson because it's being done like this. This thing now goes to the office and it has to be downloaded, uploaded, whatever, and made into a YouTube video and only then is it sent to me and only then can I post it. So I'm sorry if you want to actually go and look at it as soon as you can but you're going to have to wait until I've gone through, until that process has happened. Okay, and I have no control over that. Okay, another word for homozygous. Ready, steady, go. In fact, there are two other words. Tubsy, go. Oh, man, I can't see you, so you can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> you're like a dog. <laughs> no, that's that's not an insult, that's a compliment. When the dog goes behind the curtain and goes, you can't see me, but this whole bum is sticking out. 
Yeah. Okay, Amu, help that friend of yours. Uh, I'm using it like pure, like true reading. Yeah. Oh, true breeding, pure breeding. And just think about it, because it's like a horse, a pure bred horse. Okay, so pure breeding, true breeding, same thing as homozygous. And which of these two is homozygous? The bottom one. The bottom one. You happy with that? So this would also be homozygous for that characteristic, not necessarily for anything else. Okay, you happy with that? Okay, heterozygous, a definition and the alternative term, another term for it. Trish, go. Um, another term is hybrid. Good. Okay, so I'm not, I wouldn't in a test accept copies that didn't match. I would be looking for the two alleles for a characteristic, in other words, at the same locus, because they are for a characteristic, are not the same as each other. So that would be heterozygous, this wouldn't, this wouldn't. That would be hybrid, this wouldn't, this wouldn't. You okay with that, guys? All right. Okay, we happy with dominant and recessive. Okay, we happy with allele. We happy with characteristic. Okay, quickly revise these two words: phenotype and genotype. So phenotype. No, let's do genotype first. Genotype is the genetic composition of an organism for the characteristic in which you're interested. So if I said to you, what's the genotype of this organism? You would say, heterozygous tongue roller. Heterozygous tongue roller is the genotype. And in symbol form, you would write a big R, little r. Because the ability to roll one's tongue is dominant and the inability to roll a tongue is recessive. Okay, you happy with that, guys? Genotype. Kaylin. Okay, homozygous? Homozygous. Homozygous. No. <laughs> At 1.30 this morning, I was thinking, I don't get paid enough for this. I have to tell you this. And it again sprang to my mind right now. Caleb, go! Okay, Joshua, help her. Okay, let's go back to this one, you little lower grade children. Heterozygous tongue roller. Homozygous non roller. Okay, right. Tabsy. What's up, man? That's a homozygous tongue roller. Excellent. Okay, right, you happy with that? Yeah. Okay, so that then would be the genotype. And that means genetic composition. And that would be the heterozygous, homozygous, etc. Okay, phenotype is the physical outcome. The physical outcome because of the genotype. Okay. So, we have the fungi. Let's go. Phenotype. Uh, tongue roller. Tongue roller. Good. William. Non tongue roller. Matt. Tongue roller. Okay, you happy with that? It's the physical outcome, the actual what happens as a result of that genetic composition. It's still physical outcome because there will be an enzyme being made that enables you to taste that bitter taste in Brussels sprouts. And I wish I could remember, do you know off the top of your head, I think the taster is dominant. 
think it's dominant. How many of you don't like Brussels sprouts? Little kabajas. Okay, right, moving on. Okay. Hmm? Okay. If you don't like them, it's possible that the reason why you don't like them is because you have the gene that enables you to taste PTC, phenolthiocarbamide, I think it is. And that is a chemical that has a bitter taste. Now that is in Brussels sprouts. There is no Brussels sprout without that chemical. But a non-taster can't taste that. So it doesn't taste bitter to a non-taster, but it does taste bitter to a taster. And that's one of the reasons why most people don't like Brussels sprouts. Ma'am, are there any other foods that have a, like a characteristic like that? So, like, that Smelly urine from asparagus. <laughs> no, no, but listen carefully to me when I explain it to you. Everybody, when they eat asparagus, everybody excretes a chemical in the urine. Some people can smell it and some people can't. So it's not that you have smelly urine or you don't have smelly urine. If you eat asparagus, you have smelly urine, but you may not be able to smell it. And that's genetic. Oh, and you know what another one is? Sneezing in bright light. Sneezing in bright light. I mean, why would you waste a gene on that? Yeah. No, 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 I'm not being rude about you because we've got the gene for not sneezing in bright light. But why would you waste DNA space? <laughs> for something like sneezing in bright light. I mean, how does this help you in evolutionary terms to sneeze in bright light? Okay. All right, Shalise, go. No, that's just the pigment that goes through. Okay, yep. Yeah, no, I don't think it's a genetic thing. Would I? Okay, right, moving on. Okay, guys, so we're happy with phenotype and genotype, and are you keeping time? Who's the timekeeper in this class? Okay. All right. If one does a genetic cross, then within that genetic problem, the first generation that you consider. So, if I want to know why is Matthew, why does Matthew have hitchhiker's thumbs? I would have to go back to his parents and his grandparents. And so the first generation in that is his grandparents. And so I would call his grandparents the parental generation, and the abbreviation is capital P. All right. The second generation in that problem where I'm trying to work out why Matt's got funny thumbs are his parents. And they are called the first filial generation, and it's abbreviated as F subscript 1. And so that would be Matt's parents. No, the parental generation is the grandparents, right? Yes, because it's the first generation I looked at. Okay. So it's that generation. They came yeah. first in time. Okay. So parental. Okay? First filial generation. And then Matt and Justine are the second filial generation. Okay. Which is abbreviated as capital F subscript to Matthew B. Mom, how can you only look at the, like the furthest she goes parental generation? Why don't you look further than that? I might have to, okay. but I could probably, from 
that tell you who's got it from. Might have to go further back. In which case, that generation would be the parental. And then the grandparents would be the F1, and his parents would be the F2, and Matt and Justine are the F3. And we'd just keep going. Right, everybody happy? Okay. All right, so now we've done those things. Okay, so quickly going. Um, a very simple genetic cross. Oh, this is going to make me seasick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, All right, so let's have a look at a very simplistic cross. Okay. First of all, let's, um, I just need to remind you about gametes, okay? All right, so if there's a person who's homozygous tongue roller, it doesn't matter how many gametes that individual produces, all of them would have the gene for tongue rolling. Why am I only writing it once when that one's got two? Why in a gamete is there only one? Kerry. Um, because a gamete is? is a copy. And therefore has only one copy of each of the genes. Because yes. one copy of the entire set of chromosomes. You happy with that? Okay. This individual, doesn't matter how many gametes that individual produces, all of them are going to have the allele for being unable to roll the tongue. You happy with that? Michelle. And those two, you draw them exactly the same size as I did. Okay. Yeah. Because I was talking about tongue rolling. I was going back to the tongue rolling. And remember, the allele for being able to roll one's tongue is dominant. Okay, we'll make it a taster. A PTC taster. So why did you last that long and not tell me? I was on a roll. I don't know if this is Do you all do you all understand why bluffs no, not why bluffs, do you all understand why it was a mistake? Yes. If I was talking about tongue rolling then I couldn't use the symbols big T and little t because that would mean an individual with a tongue and an individual without a tongue. Okay, so you can't use big T and little t, you have to use R's, which means roller or non-roller. Okay, all right. Jade. Um, with the, so with the gametes, because um, they're haploid, does that mean then for the heterozygous tongue roller that 11 and a half of the gametes are... Four time rolling and eleven and a half on No. You're talking chromosome number and that's a very different thing. So let's say there's a male and a male produces a thousand sperm. Five hundred of them are gonna have big T, five hundred of them are gonna have little T. If you've got a human female and she produces an egg one month, there's a 50% chance that it's going to have big T and a 50% chance it's going to have little T. Okay. What happens if an uneven number is produced? Is it one just going to be... Of oh, sperm? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Because remember one, which is the egg cell, is an uneven number. I, mean, I, oh, yes. I think I know that. I think it's correct. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do figures. You know I don't. 
Okay, does that make sense? Yes. So that just means that the other one didn't, the other, in fact, three didn't survive. Because remember, it's the end result of meiosis. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. But you don't have to obsess about that. It's like irrelevant. Yes. Uh, Ma'am, when it's bigti bigti, and you get the gametes and just one big T, why is it not two big T's? Because gametes are all haploid. But then when it's big T, little T, why do you get a big T, little T? Then? Because they're two different options. So, um, if you have a pair of socks that's black and you put your hand in the drawer and you pull out a sock, yeah. it can only be black. Yes because both of those things are black. But if you have a pair of socks where the one has little red dots on and the other has little red hearts on, and you put your hand in the drawer and you pull out one of those socks, you've got a 50% chance that it's gonna have dots and a 50% chance that it's gonna have hearts. There are two different options there because those two are not the same as each other. So, so if there's two different options and two different gametes are produced, no, lots of gametes are produced, probably, what? but there's a 50% chance of this one and a 50% chance of that one. Okay. Whereas if they're all the same, there's a 100% chance that it's going to be the black sock. Okay. So 100% so so right. chance that it's going to have, yes, so you just write it once. Okay. No, I just thought it was literally one produced and then two produced, which doesn't make sense. No, it's statistically okay right you guys happy yes. okay so all right here's a parental generation it is a female that is a homozygous tongue roller marries a male who is a homozygous non roller all right gametes cross in other words, has offspring. Mm -hmm. Does the deed. <laughs> Which <laughs> doesn't always result in offspring, fortunately. <laughs> okay. All right. Everybody happy with that? Okay. Gametes. Queasy. In a circle. Okay, you happy with that? So this couple has fourteen children. Jay, tell me about those children's genotype. Tongue Good, excellent. So it doesn't matter how many children these two have, <coughs> they will be heterozygous tongue rollers. Is there any chance of them producing a non roller? Um, Unless there's some other oak involved? <laughs> no. <laughs> Can that happen? No, it would only be if there was some other female involved, which wouldn't work. Okay, right. Doesn't matter how many children they have. So the phenotype is that they are all tongue rollers, and the genotype they are all heterozygous. Um, rollers. Okay, you all happy with that? Yes, babe? So now, with my sister myself, I can roll my tongue, but she can't. I thought you were identical. I was a little so. But now she can roll her tongue. Wait, are identical twins? The characteristics also identical. Like, in terms of the... I could have sworn that one of the sections we did in online teaching was twins. 
genetically. So I'm right handed and she's left handed. Yeah, but you're just weird. <laughs> yes, I'm listening. Shh, guys. Okay, let's say I have like five children, a quad. Are they all going to be the exact same? Mm, unlikely if they're quads, because they're like fraternal twins. So they normally in quads, it would be five separate eggs, five separate five. sperm. But it could be. It could be that like two of them are identical and these two are identical. It's just okay. Then, mm. so, like, let's say Charlie's, like, okay, but they're just weird. Okay, let them go. Let's, let's say like I'm pregnant and I've got twins, like, and then I give birth, and then like, are they both going to be like star athletes? <laughs> if the patient is the same, or not? If they share the same, or if they share the same, let's say it depends on whether. They, okay, so remember in the section that I did online. Where there was a whole section on twins, no, identical I'm not twins. That. I haven't watched that, but. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I'm being honest. I have, I have, but like, let's say, are they both going to be like star athletes? Not or necessarily. Like star, or like, are they if they are identical, if they came from the same egg and sperm, mm -hmm. and one's got a characteristic, like it's got blue eyes, then the other one should have blue eyes as well, and they must be the same gender. Go and look at that video. Okay, right, going. You two stop it. This might be super silly, but if Charlize and Carmen were to have a child with the same man, yeah. oh, is that child technically then their children related? Like, in terms of are they yeah. brothers and sisters? So, so, what like, they if they're going to raise the same man, like, you have to be with the same man, so you're both pregnant and the same man. Okay, right, so we're not doing true housewives of Joburgs or whatever you're doing. It's both. Okay. No, they wouldn't be twins. Okay, moving on. Michelle. No, shh, moving on, guys. No, because they came. Okay. The, the guy's the issue here. <laughs> um, because in theory, no, no, it's not the guy. No, it's the guys, and and okay, let's not do this. It's no, guys, it's going to become quite complicated, and so it's going to take the whole of the rest of the lesson to explain it, and then I'm still going to have half the class still not understanding. So let's let it go. You don't have to know. Okay, but go and watch that video. Okay, All right. So, parental generation, F1 generation. In humans, how would I get an F2 generation? Sahana. Pardon me? Don't you use like a table method? Oh, yeah, but I've got to get another individual first. Okay, so marry this individual off to another individual. They would both produce gametes and then I would carry on to the next generation. Okay, you can't get an F2 from one individual in the F1. Unless it's a plant, you can in a plant. Okay, don't. Alright, everybody happy? <laughs> okay. Right, guys, let's go. Let's get a heterozygous individual. Okay, remember you've got to write the symbols up top here properly. Not a wiggly line. So you're going to write, capital R represents the allele for tongue rolling in humans. Lowercase r represents the inability to roll one's tongue in humans. Okay, but the reason why I didn't write them up is because we'd been discussing them earlier. Badly, but we had been discussing them. Okay, right, so here's a heterozygous individual. Um, crossed with a homozygous recessive individual. Okay, gametes. Let's go. Trish.
Okay, everybody happy with that? Which means that you've only got two options in the offspring. Okay? And you can do it as a Punnett square if that's what you want to do. So let's do the Punnett square method, which I absolutely loathe. Okay, right. So these are the gametes from that individual, and that's the gamete from that individual. Now, do you realize that you could have done this twice, but you would have wasted your life? Okay, so. Why would you have wasted your life? Because it's going to be exactly the same. Okay. Right, so. Okay, let's go. Julia, sorry to interrupt your coffee. Um, let's go. Big R. Like uh, little R. Are these circles here? No. Good. Little R, little R. Okay. So, phenotype of the offspring. Okay, you can either say a half, or you can say one to one, or you can say 50%. Okay, so one phenotype um, would be tongue roller to one non-roller. Okay, happy? Bongo, you're right. Yeah. I can see you can't read that. I couldn't answer. Yeah, like the handwriting is the advantage. No, it is. No, it absolutely is. Okay. Genotype. Okay. Right. Charlize, go. One. One tongue roller. Genotype. Pardon? Genotype. Oh, that. I want to say heterozygous, one heterozygous tongue roller, and one... Okay, it's not and, it's two, it's a ratio. Oh, so one heterozygous tongue roller, and then two uh, homozygous tongue roller. Why two, love? Because then you just said one to two. No, two. No. Oh, no, no, sorry. I meant it's a ratio, so you don't say one oh, and so one, you say one to one. So it's one heterozygous tongue roller, and then one. Not okay. No, it is homozygous tongue roller. Homozygous non roller. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Everybody happy with that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now what I want you to do. Yes. Perfect. Okay. All right. I want you to do in D. I want you to do A and B. And I know you did this last term, so don't cheat. Do it again. Yes, it was probably one of those days you did Okay. Brunch. Okay. Um, and then E, I want you to do one and two. Do not put your foot in my classroom tomorrow if you have not done this. Okay. From tomorrow, we are speeding up considerably. Okay. So make sure you've learned all your work up until now. Make sure that you've learned for your test. Make sure everything. Oh. No. <laughs> Okay. Oh. <laughs>